Okay, welcome back to another episode of Divinity Original Sin in honor mode. Let's go check out this guy with his chicken. Don't let that rooster escape. He's already on the menu for tonight. Isn't it a chicken's destiny to be eaten? We should catch it and give it back to the cook. Isn't it a chicken's destiny to be eaten? We should catch it and give it back to the cook. Wait a minute, I don't want to see this poor chicken slaughtered. I want him free. Wait a minute. I don't want to see this poor chicken here slaughtered. I want him free. 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 Who knows what this chef might do if we don't give him that chicken? Maybe he'll carve us up instead. Look at that cute little beak. Can you really condemn that face to the cleaver? No, we'll do as I say. I got like heartless. Backstabbing. I think they both should be compassionate, it sounds like. If we're just gonna game the system, might as well game the system properly. Oh, did I not save it? Oh, how I nice I it is. Oops, I don't want to hit that. Saw that and walked around this way. <laughs> Too far away. Way, huh? So many buildings in this place, it's crazy. A chicken has the right to live too. Yes, let's pardon him. Why did you let my chicken escape? I didn't let it escape. I still closed the door. You let my chicken escape? Looks like it's your lucky day, Jack. Not to tell the troops they're getting nothing but the corn bread. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Source Hunter, you come to the right place. Recruiting parts. You don't see nothing. Just a barrel. We're stealing. They're worth nothing. important stuff. Nothing that important over there. Oh, hum. Let's pick up a water barrel. I can pick up a water barrel. I thought I'd do more strength than that. Painting of a pig, nice. Roasted pork. Sounds like a good food. space to grab the stuff. Lockpick. Smoke grenade. There's all kinds of crazy stuff in here. That's funny how like how long you can spend stealing in this game. It's just ridiculous. Greetings! These stores are for our legion. 
There's this crazy clue. That then. Come on, stand where my good eye can see you. Easy, Tull. That's the source hunter you're talking to. She may have the look of a woman if you squint hard enough, but she's no more than a wild animal. We got reports of a strange looking outsider skulking through the town with her bow drawn. I found her crouched behind a tree, taking aim at a fat old rat trotting along the city walls. her on the shoulder to see what was what, and the beast startled like a wild cat and lunged right at me. Bit Tullia right in the face, she did. It wasn't pretty, and now it's got a chunk ripped off it to boot. Enjoy it while you can, Ver. There's not another legionnaire in the cohort that'll have you if I go rabid. Well, that's to be decided. She doesn't seem to be sick, despite Tully's moaning. We can't keep her here forever, but we can't well send her into the wilds again, can we? Perhaps it'd be worth taking this stranger under our wing. She'll likely come in handy if we can trust her to watch our backs. After all, a fearless hunter might prove quite useful for our investigation. Well, that's a relief, ain't it? We found a good home for her after all, Tull. Heed me, source hunter. She's not good for anything more than cannon fodder. And don't turn your back on her when she's got that bow within arm's reach. Archer to a party. Sweet. You say you will take me under your wing. But I see no <laughs> feathers. Are you a child of the birds, as I am of the bears? And so the lonely babe was fed upon the wild mother's milk. And cast aside from humankind, he thrived among his mother's ilk. So says the saga of Thrys. Do you know it? The wise godwolf Amira raised the child Thrys among her litter. So you see, I have good company. Thrys the wolfson, and I the bear daughter. Bear daughter. In truth, this is a relief. Your world is made with rules I have not yet memorized. I am happy to have a friend in such a place. Ask freely, my friend. Your city is far more wild than home forest. In home forest, the rules are clear. In home forest, your strength and speed determine your fate. Here, a tiny screech woman, no swifter than a mudworm, might confine you into a tiny cage. And one must wait for a kind stranger to grant freedom. Jarrett, wise Jarrett, taught me the bird songs of your, our people. If not for him, I would never have learned more than the beasts could teach me. A beast's life is to survive. A human's is to know. I am both beast and human, and so I must do both. I have learned all the bird song that Jarrett could teach. I remembered every word. These tales have brought me much pleasure. The remembering of the beasts is without lies. We know not to approach the wasp's nest because long ago, one bear mother discovered its dangers. This she taught to her cubs, and those cubs taught the next. We do not remember Vito and the battle of the buzzing brutes. We remember only what is useful to us now. Rito will be forgotten. The beauty of the story will be forgotten. But the lesson will not. It is different between beasts and humans. I am lucky to enjoy both ways. He came to me when I was small. A fierce, wild one, yet unaware of the difference between the other cubs and herself. He called to me in a soft song. At first I thought him a great bird. We each reached out to the other. We found each other. Jarrett visited me often. And in time I learned his songs and more. When he built a small cabin within Home Forest, I hunted his food and fetched his water by day while he studied his books and his magics. By night, by the fire, he'd tell me tales of the world of people. Jarrett is my master and my friend. My teacher and myself. He teaches me and I care for him. 
I heard this was a place of many people, so here I came. I have seen more faces here in a day than I had seen in all the days of my life together. But I have not found the face I seek. Jarrett is missing. It is my duty to find him. That mystery is thick and ugly as a swarm of hornets. It started with a great disturbance in Home Forest. A terrible disease came in the night and turned the birds and beasts soft and foul as carrion while they still lived. I watched countless of my loved ones die, rotted from the inside. When I ran to Jarrett to tell him what I had seen, his reaction was strange. He had no answer. The next morning, Jarrett did not emerge from his room. I left him be, but after three days I grew anxious. I broke down the door and inside his chamber was nothing. His equipment, his books, all but some scraps of parchment were gone. He was kidnapped and all his research was taken with him. The only clue I found was a letter among the scraps. I, I could not make out all the words, but I recognized the threat. Death, coming for you. And the signature? Attenborough. I do not know the one called Attenborough, but I know that if I am to find Jarrett, I must start there. Whoever this Attenborough may be, I believe he or she may know where Jarrett has been taken. Cool story, bro. Can we still go back? Hunter, I have heard tales both grand and terrible about the world of humans. I myself was caged one moment and freed the next by your... In home forest, every creature acts according to the nature of its kind. Birds frighten easily. Badgers fear little. But amongst men, there are no guarantees. It is difficult for me to claim humanity as you do. I am still learning to see myself in the faces of those I meet. And those I meet do not always see themselves in me. It is strange to stand with one foot in the forest and the other in the city, Source Hunter. I am glad that now I have you standing beside me. Okay, done that dialogue. This place. Where's the uh, main quest spot? Evidence chest. I can't move these chests, huh? Can't reach. Can't throw it for. I wonder how you use telekinesis. Because I should have telekinesis here. Icons messed up. <laughs> Too much to 
carry, huh? I do have this ridiculous water barrel. Yeah, she seems to be using telekinesis right there. I am on the trail, Source Hunter. I am on the trail, uh, Source Hunter. Her. I guess she needs stronger telekinesis. Seal, but don't make waves and don't interfere with the Legion's affairs. You hear? I'm Captain Aureus, if you must know, oh, leader yes. of the Legion in Sicil. By which I mean I have the enviable task of commanding a battalion of walking dead. For I fear it may well be but a matter of time before the undead undo all my soldiers and turn them into dribbling hordes of their own misshapen number. Gods above! Some politician snuffs it and everyone's in an uproar. Ridiculous! I told that wizard brat of an Ahu not to bother. He just had to send for source hunters, didn't he? Bloody magicians. They see a pigeon poop and think sorcery's afoot. Nevertheless, I want to be kept in the loop. Understand? I am in command of this town. Not Mayor Cecil, not Ahu, and definitely not some hotshot source hunter. So investigate Jake's death if you feel so inclined, but report back to me the moment you discover something out of the ordinary. The scene of the crime is over at the King Crab Inn. You can tell the guard you have my permission to enter. Now off with you. Esmeralda is Jake's wife. Well, well, widow. Everyone in town, down to the crabs on the beach, is convinced she killed him. Now, the girl has the reputation of being a flirt. There is that. But that doesn't suffice as evidence, wouldn't you say? Or do source hunters rely on hearsay alone, perhaps? That certainly would explain some of the cock-ups you lot have made in the past. What? You're going to stand there and claim with a straight face your order never wrongly tortured and executed anyone? Hardly, but I won't stand for such nonsense. If you bring evidence before me, I'll evaluate it with perfect objectivity. The Legion relies on reason, see? Not idle superstition. <sighs> if you must. Bravo! Figured that one out, did you? I haven't been stuck here for two years because we're being besieged by fluffy kittens, you know? <laughs> Those brain-feasting freaks out there keep on coming. And it takes all the sword arms and all of our who's half-baked contraptions to keep them at bay. Keeping them at bay, that is all we do. Were that I could break their backs once and for all. How am I enjoying it? Are you spoiling for a fight, Hunter? Are you? Sicy, you stinks of fish. Reeks of orcs, and on a good day, the wind disperses the stench of decomposing corpses. I can't remember the last time I had a proper piece of steak, and by now, I wretch at the mere sight of sardines. So, in conclusion, I am not enjoying Sicil. <laughs> we are the pride of Rivalon, to be found and to be seen everywhere. We don't hide in the dark and lurk in corners like some I could mention. No, we protect the civilized from the barbaric, and we do so impeccably. I'd say they are looking for weak spots in our defenses. They can't make an attack over land for fear of Ahu's magical machines, so they're trying their luck by sea. They won't succeed, though. Not against the Legion. Yes, and he also spends most of his time in the guise of a cat. 
licking God's knows which body parts. Sex. Sorcerers. You'll be seeing flying carpets next. Okay. Master 2 to identify it. Smelly sucks. One pillow. Weird how like I don't have sneaking at all and I can still like sneak around. Which is silly. Your quest fares well, dear hunter. But certainly. What would you like to know? Oh, I am but a wizard. A guardian of man and beast. And indeed, I am both. My body, like any other, is bound to temporal decay. But my spirit is a speck of light that shone forth from the eternal sun that is the cosmic soul.
My task upon this earth is to protect the heart of nature. The very antithesis of which is the intrigue spun by demons and directors of the dead. Hence my involvement in Saisio. You see, my one desire is to witness a world in which every mother looks around her and purrs with calm contentment. For she knows that her chicks or children, her cubs or calves, will grow up without knowing the meaning of menace, the enfeeblement of fear. To my great regret, none of them purr as yet. Oh, but that's not a trick. It's of such magic is a gift, Hunter. To tread upon the realm of instinct, even articulate speech. Perhaps humanity's greatest asset cannot give expression to something so inextricably innate. To be out in the night, to stalk on silent paws and hunt with only the moon as your witness. You couldn't possibly imagine the thrill. But of course it's handy to speak in more than meows. Oh, that'll never happen. Granted, a witch could make the polymorph permanent if she'd enchant me and my cat guys, but I'll just have to be careful around witches, won't I? I'm my own wizard, you know, and I don't intend to become anyone's familiar. By all means. Of course. I hope your investigation fares well. I can but piece together what few morsels fell from the grapevine into a rather disappointing meal, I'm afraid. They say a woman arrived in the King Crab Inn sometime after midnight. She retired to a room on the ground floor where she was soon joined by a man who had been nursing the same cup of wine for hours. I say man and woman because both of them were cloaked and recognized by none. About an hour later, another figure arrived, headed for the same room. Soon after, a terrible commotion erupted and the thundering light of magic was witnessed by the few remaining patrons. It took a while for the landlord to pluck up the courage to enter the mystery room. When finally he did, he found Jake there, dead. How and why he came to be there, no one knows. But I had a good look around the scene of the crime before the Legion barred anyone from entering. The traces of magic I felt were vile. Source, no doubt. I myself have none. Even though the rest of the town has already mentally tried and convicted Jake's wife, Esmeralda. Now, it may well be established that she is, in fact, the guilty party. I'm not claiming that I'm certain she's innocent, but let's just say that if I really thought this murder case would be so very easily resolved, I wouldn't have sent for source hunters. I can't say much more, but that they're madmen. All the more dangerous to us because of their alliance with what should be a natural enemy. You won't see me teaming up with a terrier in a hurry. And what might those be? Those who are raising the dead dwell among us. They simply must be. But even though I've spent many a night leaping from tree to rooftop, watching on as citizens stagger home from the inn or simply burn the midnight oil. I haven't spied a single soul worthy of true suspicion. The enemy is wily. They know us better than we know them, and they've found ways to avoid both detection and distrust. Yet I am somehow convinced that you may succeed where the Legion and I have failed. Call it instinct. You have a flair for understatements, Hunter. I'm sure they are but a minor nuisance in the eyes of a born warrior. But to the Legion, they are green-skinned death incarnate. Until they conclude what mischief they intend to see through, or less likely, they are conclusively defeated. We can but bar the gates and hole up like mice while the cats are on the prowl. Oh, a mere trifle for one with the intellect of a feline and the engineering skills of a human? You basically construct a classic ballista. Add a 100% legally obtained self-regenerating source of destructive magic to it, and bobcats your uncle. Alright, talk to him. Let's see, one thing I want to do before I forget... 
gonna actually steal that wand. I'm not so sure I did. Because when I reloaded, I might have forgotten to open that chest. Time. I think I think it was blue last time. I think I read that the chest contents are defined when you open them. Yeah, whatever, it's the same. Doesn't so much matter. How can I help you, my friend? He's got a bunch of stuff too. He's got wands. Master two. Is three. Yeah, so wands are apparently better. is three. I should search on this golden grail, figure what the hell that is. Blank skill book earth. Alright, well that's a good stuff for the episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time.